Hello and welcome to this third video in the series of developing web applications with ASP.NET 4.5 using web, uh, web forms. Today we're going to be building out the database access layer for our web application and we're going to be doing that by using um, Entity Framework. Entity Framework is an object relational mapper that enables .NET developers to work with relational data using objects instead of SQL queries as we did before in previous versions of, of um, ASP.NET. Entity Framework first became available with the release of dot, the .NET Framework 3.5 and then gradually evolved to its current version at the time of the, the recording of this video, video which is version 4.0. An entity framework actually allows us to develop using three different paradigms uh, which we're going to look at before going into the code of the application. The first paradigm is called design first, and then we have database first, and finally we have code first. So let's have a look uh, at each of these paradigms or approaches to try and understand a little bit more about them. Design first in, um, means that the, the the developer of the web application is going to be using SQL, uh, is using a Visual Studio to um, design a uh, entity relationship diagram, which is going to be defining all of the entities that are needed for the application to function, the properties for those entities, as well as the relationships between those entities. Following this, the developer of the application would then use Entity Framework to generate the C-sharp classes that represent these entities in code, as well as the database table structure that and the relationships between tables that would allow the C-sharp classes to store information in the database and retrieve it back from the database. Database First is a second approach in which an already existing database design is used to extract the entity relationship diagram and then entity framework is used to generate the C sharp classes to represent the uh, entities in the in the entity relationship diagram this is an approach that was that is tailored to the traditional way of designing data driven application applications where the developer would first design a database then normalize it and then based on the resulting table structure um, design the classes needed to be able to actually retrieve uh, um, information from the database and display it through the uh, web interface. The last approach which is the one that we're going to be using throughout this tutorial is code first. Code first um, is the inverse of the database first approach in which the developer of the application starts out by building C sharp classes in Visual Studio to represent the entities and then codes out the relationship between these classes following which uh, the developer uses entity framework to go ahead and create the table structure in the database and the uh, relationships between the tables to represent uh, the entities in the database and be able to pull data out and store data back into the database. So without further ado, let's go ahead and look at building POCO classes for our ASP.NET Web Forms 4.5 application and uh, POCO stands for Plain Old C Sharp Object. So I'm going to be jumping back into my development environment where I have already fired up Visual Studio and have opened the application where we left, uh, where we last left off. Um, and what I'd first like to do um, to con to start constructing the um, object model is to add a folder in my application, and I'm going to call this folder uh, BLL for short for business logic layer and then inside that folder I'm going to be adding one more folder which is going to be called model and all of my model classes are going to be inside this folder now the model classes are very very simple classes as you will see I could code them out directly but for purposes of speed I'm just going to uh, go ahead and bring them in from files that I have already uh, coded prior to the recording of this video and are on disk so I have three classes that I brought in. 
The first one is toy category and in my web application I would like to build an online store and this online store is obviously going to have different categories to contain the different sorts of toys that I would like to be um, selling. So the toy category class is going to be representing a toy, uh, a category entity and as you can see it has a set of properties um, of different types. So the first one is of, of type integer and it's called category ID. Then we have a string called name. We have a string called description, a string called short description and a date time called last updated. And all of these categories come with a get and a set. And uh, basically one will represent the uh, primary key uh, for this, uh, for the table that's going to be built in the database and the rest are just uh, properties which will need to display data. Last updated will be the date and time when this category object was last updated. Then I have brought in a product class which is very similar to the toy category class. I have a primary key which is the product ID. Uh, uh, a property which is going to be uh, serving as the primary key. And then I have a set of properties uh, of type string which is going to be containing some data. Um, the price of the product that I'm going to be selling uh, via the application, the units in stock, uh, the thumbnail path and the last updated date. And obviously a product will have one or more pictures. So I have a product picture class and the product picture class also has a set of properties with getters and setters, a picture ID, a title, short description, a file location, a thumbnail file location. If we're using the this picture as a logo picture for that particular product, a creation date and a background color to set when we're displaying the uh, image in the browser. Now, so far, if I build out my classes, um, this project is going to compile, but you will notice that I'm not doing any database related code. And all of these classes are standalone classes which don't have any relationships between them. So the next step is to actually go ahead and code the relationships that will link my uh, newly defined classes. And for that, I'm going to go and grab uh, a few more code snippets and the first one is going to be define a new relational property inside the toy category class. So this relational property is going to be t of type I collection of products and this will be going to be called products and we're going to be using this property to get a hold of the list of products which are uh, belonging to the toy category that I currently am looking at. Then we're going to be adding uh, two more properties to the, whoops, wrong snippet file, two more properties to the um, product class. So let's grab those and insert them. So if I go to the product class, I will be adding a integer property of type category, uh, called category ID, which is going to be storing the category ID of the category that this product belongs to. So this is going to be acting uh, just as a foreign key in the product uh, entity table because the category ID is serving as a product uh, as a primary key inside the toy category table, which we're going to be uh, building via entity framework. And we're going to have a uh, toy uh, a property of type toy category, which will allow me to get a hold of the instance of the toy category object to which this product object belongs to. And finally, we're going to be adding some relational properties to the product picture class. And to the product picture class, what we'd like to add are two more properties. Um, just like for the product class, we will have the product ID, which is the product uh, ID of the product class, of the product instance that this product picture belongs to. So this is going to also be serving as a foreign key. And we're going to have a, uh, have a property of type product, which will allow us to get a hold of the instance of the product uh, object that this product picture object belongs to. And to link, to complete the, the linking of all of my classes, I will go ahead and I will add one more property to the product um, class. And this property is similar to what I had in the toy category class. It's going to be an I collection of type product picture, which is going to be returning all of the pictures which are associated with this particular product. So now 
I have a toy category which can contain one or more products and each product can contain one or more pictures and this is the way that I define these relationships starting from code directly uh, directly in my classes so now I can build my project you note that I still do not have any database access code yet in, uh, in my solution so what I'm going to do next is I'm going to add two more classes which I've already coded out and the first one is going to be the product context and the second is going to be the product model initializer class and we're going to have a look at these so the product context class is using the system data entity uh, namespace to pull in the uh, entity framework objects that we're going to be using and then it is defining a set of three properties of type db set which is a collection of objects a typed collection of objects and we can see that i'm defining a type collection of toy categories a type collection of product and a type collection type collection of product picture and um, these properties are called toy category products and product pictures and they both they all define getters and setters now the product context class inherits a uh, class called DB context which is a, an entity framework um, object and um, basically all of the pro uh, all, all of the context classes that you will be building for all of your web applications using entity framework have to inherit the db context class which is a class that allows entity framework to um, go and target a specific database and uh, build the necessary sql queries to retrieve data from the database to select data insert update and delete data from that database and the last thing i've done in my um, product context class is that i've modified the constructor because the constructor was uh, uh, an empty constructor and I have um, added the call to the base constructor passing it a string and the string that I'm passing into the base constructor is the uh, name of the connection string to be used to connect to the uh, to a specific database if I don't pass a string to the base constructor it's just going to be using the default connection string which is available in my web.config which is not what I want so I'm going to be passing a uh, web sample connection string as the connection string name and then obviously I will have to go to my web.config file and make sure that I define a connection string which is called web sample connection string so let's just go back to the data to the web.config file and in the web.config I've already um, added the necessary line of code to uh, add this connection string so as you can see the connection string is called web sample connection string and it points to a database which is called the web sample product store database so the next thing to do is to go into the Microsoft SQL Server management studio and actually uh, add a database which is called um, the same name so I'm just going to right click on add and then create a new database new empty database which is called web sample product store and add it now what you would do um, would be to first start with the Microsoft SQL Server Management Studio create an empty database then create a connection string using the uh, server explorer in Microsoft Visual Studio by adding a new connection and then allowing Visual Studio to build out that connection string for you to the database you have created then adding it to the web.config file to finally come to your product uh, to your context class and add the line to um, to the base constructor instructing it to use the newly created connection string to connect to the target database the second class that I've added is the product mode initializer class this product mode initializer class um, defines two static methods um, each of which return, returns a typed list so I have a method which is called get categories and a second method which is called get products and the first method um, is just going to be building out a list of type toy category and populating it with um, some fictitious data and then returning the newly created list to the caller 
and the same is true for the get products class I'm going to be instantiating a new list of type product and then dynamically creating two new instances of type product inside and then returning the newly created list of type product to the caller this class inherits from another data, uh, entity framework uh, class called drop create database if model changes basically uh, entity framework is able to uh, detect model changes and if the model has changed um, between uh, between database accesses what I'm going to do is I'm going to drop the old database and recreate a new database structure um, in order to ensure that the database structure that I'm working with corresponds with the current model now this is something that you can do very easily in development when in production what you would like what you, what I'd recommend you do is you'd go to um, the NuGet packet package manager and you'd grab a NuGet package which is called entity framework migrations um, which allows you a much greater control on how you'd like to modify an existing database structure in order to accommodate the changes that you've performed on the model classes and not drop the existing database to recreate it but for development purposes drop create database if model changes is perfect and this drop database uh, drop create database if model changes uh, class actually exposes a method called seed which we're going to be overriding in our product model initializer and in the override for the seed method um, we're going to be calling the get categories and the get products private methods so we're going to be getting a list of categories toy categories and for each category in the list we're going to be calling the toy categories property of the context object which is a, of type product context which is passed in to the method and we're going to be adding that category to the um, list of categories in the product context the same holds true for the products so for each product in the list of products we're going to be adding it to the products list in the the product context object which is uh, also going to add the categories and the products to the database so that the next time we query the database we're actually going to have data in the database to uh, return and not just return empty data sets and you'll notice that the for each statement takes in uh, an anonymous lambda to actually populate the collection now to finish hooking all of this up um, the last thing I need to add is in the global AZAX file I'm going to have to um, include two namespaces and these namespaces should now be familiar I'm obviously going to be importing system data entity which uh, references the, uh, the entity framework objects and then I'm going to be using the web sample BLL model um, uh, namespace where I have defined all of my model classes and then I need to add one more line of code in the application start method which is the method that gets called every time that my application will be initialized and loaded into IIS and you can see in here that there's a there's already a line of code which calls auth dot uh, auth config dot register open auth and that's the the, the method that actually registered the uh, registers the OAuth providers to allow the application to work with OAuth and I'm going to be adding one more line of code in here um, to hook up the database code and that's going to be a call to database dot set initializer of type product context new product model initializer so basically I'm going to be telling entity framework that I wanted to use a product context class to uh, uh, to be able to uh, talk to my database and I would like it to use a product model initializer to see the database the first time I uh, issue a call to, prior to the first time I issue a call to my database so now if I try to build out my project what you're going to see is that I'm going to probably get an error <clears throat> and if you get an error the error comes from the fact that you are missing a um, reference to the system uh, entity uh, data uh, the system data entity um, 
assembly in the framework classes and this is normally not present when you're building a new uh, web forms project so if you build you will have an error like this and the way to solve it is just to go and add reference and then come into the framework assemblies and make sure that the uh, system data entity assembly is checked and added back and this is all the code that we need to define the entities that I am going to be using with Entity Framework, the relations that are uh, defined between these entities, the code that will go ahead and tell Entity Framework which database to target, and how to see the database. In the next video, what we'll be doing is we will be adding the code to actually query the database and display um, data coming from the database in the user interface.